the, they call the elites, where you have the Errol Spence, the Sean Porters, the Terrence Crawfords, the Danny Garcias, names like that. And then they say there's another level, and they may mention a Jamal James and, and, and other fighters, uh, Butaev. This opportunity Saturday seems to be an opportunity for Jamal James to say, listen, I'm at the elite. How do you see this? Uh, exactly how you say it, you know what I mean? We're here in Vegas, headlining on Showtime. Uh, you know, it is time for me to let people know that I've been at this level and should be able to get the opportunities that those guys get, have been given and have gotten, you know what I mean? And that's not to take nothing away from them guys, but like you just said, man, we're, the welterweight division is stacked, you know what I mean? We got a, a, a bunch of great talent, and it's time for some new guys to get their name up there. All right, uh, fight, fight. Right, <laughs> now TV, CW, Up to you, Las up Vegas. to you, Chad. <laughs> Here with Jamal James, FightHype.com, Sean Patel. Uh, Jamal, just what do you think of your opponent, Butayev? When you, uh, have you had a chance to watch him on tape, or you don't watch tape on, on guys you're about to fight? No, I watch some tape on him, you know. It's always good to get an idea of who he's about to fight. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, he got two arms and two legs and a head like a lot of other guys I fought. Uh, I'm sure he's coming with his A game. But I'm the champion and I'm coming with my top A game as well. You know, we're going to see what happens. Do you like, do you prefer fighting the kind of style he's bringing to the game? He's not moving back off the back foot. He likes to come forward. You feel like... You, you do best against that style? Uh, you know what it is, is that being the tallest, one of the tallest welterweight fighters, everybody I fight got to come forward. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? So uh, I, if I'm using my range, if they staying outside, then I'm going to eat them up all night. So, you know, they got to come in and come forward. Um, so it's not nothing new to me. Uh, each fighter obviously has certain strengths uh, that make them different from other fighters that you face. So we'll see what you know, he has to offer, but uh, I'm not uh, worried or surprised that that's how it works. You know, that length is definitely there, obviously, but sometimes you like to mix it up. Is that is that because sometimes like you get bored of the boxing, you, or, or like that's your nature is to mix it up, or what you know, is it, I, you I, gotta, I gotta prove to the world that skinny dudes can fight like that too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got heart and grip like that too, don't slip on the skinny cats out there. Uh, now you know, it's just boxing, man. So, you know, sooner or later when you fight 12 rounds, the guy's gonna break your range. And you gotta, you, being a taller fighter, I gotta know how to fight inside as well. Right. Um, you know, when you're in the heat of, when you're in the heat of a fight, sometimes I exchange more than I probably should. Uh, but, you know, the main goal is to hit and not get hit. That's right. all I do. So that's what I try to do. You know, Jamal, uh, when you were up there in a press conference, you said how, especially after the WBA's ruling that you would love to run it back for three guys, you didn't get a full camp for the first fight. How, what do you see difference? You know, obviously, it's been, it's been a bit, you know, you've had some fights as has he. What do you see goes different in that fight, aside from you winning, of course, but what do you think is going to be like the, the, the major differences in the, in the rematch, a potential rematch of uh, your Dennis Ugas? Well, we have a full camp, and you know that you are working on specific things you need for your opponent. Um, I literally took that fight the week of, you know what I mean, and we still went the full distance and still gave a, a, a competitive fight against the guys. You know I, mean? um, I think with a full camp, um, the next time that I face off, I'll, my timing will be better on because in that fight. My timing was off. I was kind of fighting this fight a little bit more. You know what I mean? I wasn't in my rhythm, so to say. Um, and he's a good fighter, so it's not to take nothing away from him or what he did to make that happen. But it's just to say that if I had a full camp, I'd be a lot more focused and ready, and I think I'd be a lot more uh, be, uh, be able to adjust better and faster in the fight than I did the previous one. So James, uh, the fighter that you're fighting now, you're both at the same weight, and right now uh, your WBA belt is that is what you're defending right now. And so, what is the difference with Showtime that's going to put you at the top when you uh, defend your title? Well, you know, it's a bigger platform. You know, what I mean, Showtime has uh, always championed uh, professional boxing. Um, 
we're in Vegas, we're on a strip, you know what I mean? And people, I'm sure we got a bunch of people tuning into these fights. Um, the press has been amazing, and, and, you know, so it's just a whole different, uh, bigger platform. So winning on a stage like this in impeccable fashion, I think. Would take my name and push it up to that to that next level. Right, and your fashion is mostly that you use both of your jabs. And you uh, to the end of the fight, you normally go to the end. Is there going to be a difference here? You know, I if I could stop it early, then I will. You know what I mean. <laughs> but I never look for a knockout, um, and I never get overzealous because that's when you make mistakes. You know what I mean. Um, I, uh, you know, the jab and the reach is what messes a lot of these guys up, you know. Uh, I, tell, I tell people that there are certain God-given gifts that fighters have that you can't teach anybody. You can't teach nobody how to be tall. You can't teach nobody how to, have, how to use, you know, the long arms if they don't have long arms, you know what I mean? So um, those gifts alone present an obstacle for anybody that gets in the ring with me. And that's what I uh, intend to capitalize on against the just a, just a question about Boots, because you bring up that natural talent. Do you see that with him? Like, he has a lot of things that uh, other fighters could work on forever, but it's it's a God-given thing, or um, maybe making too much of that. We're just What do you see there, Jamal? No, he definitely got, you know, he got some talent, man. New cat coming up, he got some talent. He's uh, had some uh, uh, great uh, victories in his fights. Um, I think this next fight for him, uh, be good though, you know, DeLorme is no pushback for DeLorme. Many believe will be the next welterweight champion, Mr. Jerron Boots Ennis. Uh, Jerron, we talked about your talent up there. Um, you know, just to expand on that, you know, what do you, skills wise, you said you had the most talent, but do you feel you have the most skills too, not just talent? The most skills, talent, uh, hard work, dedication, everything. I, I got it all. I train hard. Uh, I do what I'm supposed to, supposed to do. Right after this fight, I'm going to be right back in the gym on Monday, you know, training and sparring and helping helping other guys get, get ready for day fights. I'm, I'm, I'm dedicated. I'm ready to take over this division. Sometimes the guys with all the talent, the, then the next question is, do they have that dog in them? And right. Sometimes it's no, but you're from Philadelphia. Do you feel you'll check that box when oh, it's time? Uh, most definitely. <laughs> I'm from Philly. Everybody know I got that dog in me. They ain't, that, that, that been in me, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, on the bigger and better thing. I'm ready to, ready to rock and roll, ready to go. Did you see Delorme's last fight with Stan Jonas? Uh, I was in the back warming up. Uh, I was seeing a little bit. He did good, but I'm not Stan Jonas. I'm a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. Talent-wise, skill-wise, power punching-wise, it's a whole, everything on a whole different level. And you watch, If you watch me fight, just because you watch me, you know what I mean? You won't be able to do anything. It's mm -hmm. different when you're in there with me. Mm -hmm. When that heat, when they get hot in that kitchen, they get crazy. You know, he, he went, even though he's lost his last couple fights, he dropped Jesse Vargas in that draw. Um, he went the distance, Daniel won some good rounds. He even gave Bud Crawford uh, a couple competitive rounds. Are you looking to beat him in a way, even those guys like Crawford, even more convincing? I mean, I'm not worried about what those guys did or anything. I'm going to have fun and do me and, uh, and put on a beautiful performance for you guys and, and come home victorious and, and with that knockout. So that's the goal for me. Just stay calm, stay relaxed, listen to the team, have fun, put on a beautiful show, make easy work. Do you feel you're more of a natural, you know, pure switch hitter than Crawford is? Really are 100% both ways? Or is he? I'm comfortable both ways. I, if I wanted to, I could fight on Saturday all right-handed or all softball. I'm just that, that, that comfortable. Like, uh, it's everything all natural for me, though. You, Jerome, we we always hear uh, fighters say, you know, especially uh, looking for that title shot. We'll hear them say, you know, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing, and the title opportunity will come. But it seems like, you know, everybody in the boxing world sees what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. They see the talent, they see the skill, they see the power. What do you feel like really has to happen for you to get that title opportunity? Because you know, most people feel that you're already up there. Yeah, I mean, well, I feel like. Uh I mean, I'm ringed every belt now, so hey, there's no way they really can get around it. But I feel like I'm had to be mandatory because these guys not gonna just be, oh, let me, let me pick Jermaine or let me, let me pick him, let me pick him. They gonna go around, they gonna go around me as long as they can. So I gotta, I'm gonna say I had to be mandatory, and we are gonna make it happen. We gonna, I'll be mandatory after this fight. 
for, for one of these books. All right, congratulations to, uh, I know this is a place somewhere you are now uh, meant to be. Uh, you've been fighting since you were 12 years old. Your opponent said he's bringing experience. But based upon what you're bringing and what you brought and what you have been uh, contributing uh, to uh, the boxing world, uh, right now you should be able to uh, be an example for others and speak on that. Um, well, I've been boxing before, so I was boxing all my life. <laughs> but uh, just, uh, what was the question? Yeah, sorry. Okay, what do you bring it to the boxing as far as the uh, youth uh, concern? Outside, uh, yeah, outside, outside, of uh -huh. outside of boxing, just want to uh, have the kids have a good role model to look up to. And, uh, you see, I'm not crazy. I don't talk crazy, reckless, and all that stuff. And just and for the kids, just be like keep them disciplined and, and you know stay focused and locked in. And I'm always helping. I'm always willing to help. You know, little kids and or teenagers, anything. So I, outside the community of boxing, I do help and I give back. I give clothes and stuff like that, and uh, sneakers to the homeless and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things I do that 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 don't get broadcasted behind the closed doors. So well, being being from Philly, you know, coming from that fighting background, you know, we always see a lot of great fighters come from Philly. Is there is there a fighter that growing up that you maybe uh? Would look look at you know learn from uh, maybe try to imitate a little bit or was there somebody uh, you looked up to I guess I you mean, could say well my style really is, is is my dad and both my brothers put together in one because uh, my brother with uh, Derek Pudge was fast my uh, other brother Farah uh, was powerful my dad was fast so it just I, it's everything in one and my, they both my brothers were slick so I got everything power speed slickness everything so uh, it's from them but. The fighters that I did watch uh, coming up was Floyd, uh, Cornell, Roy Jones, and a little bit of James Tony. And I started watching Andre Ward too. What have you made of, of the buzz you're receiving? You know, like Jamal's the main event, but you know, we all swarmed you to start right after the press conference. I feel like a lot of people are really tuning in. All respect to Jamal James, who's yeah. good, but tuning in to see you. What yeah, have you made about? No, I definitely know respect to him, but you know, everybody that's coming out here, they, they come to see you know me because. I'm uh, fan friendly. But, uh, I bring you know the skills and you know, the attributes behind everything. So I got the whole Philly coming with me. So it's gonna be heavy. it's gonna be heavy. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel any relief that the business side of boxing is lining up for you now? Because we've seen good fighters like Andrade and you know guys that are American with a lot of talent just not get opportunities. Even Terrence, you know, finally getting the Sean fight. You know, do you? I feel I feel great. You know, I feel like everything rolling the right way. Mm -hmm. I just gotta just continue to keep being victorious. That's all. How how do you see that fight going, Crawford and Porter? Uh, that's a good fight. Uh, I, th I think it's fifty fifty. If Sean Porter do what he's supposed to do, and that's coming forward, and but he gotta do it smart. If you do it smart, it's gonna be a great fight. I mean, the best man win. Because coming forward, one thing, but Terrence with his counter punches. So you feel like he's got to take an angle with it. What do you yeah, mean, John? He can't just go straight in and be like crash them. He gotta be smart. Use angles that are in and out, side to side. It can't be a stationary target. That's the only way he's gonna be able to. That's the way he's gonna be able to win or have a great shot. He can't try to box. So I think I don't think he should box. I think he should go straight forward and, and do damage. Why would you beat those guys? Given that you know they've been 12 rounds and so many title fights, you haven't been able to beat past six. Why? I'm, everybody keeps saying I have been past six <laughs> rounds, but don't know where everybody, my team know and everybody else know. Once after the sixth round, I'm just getting warmed up and. <laughs> I get stronger and stronger as the round goes on, and don't nobody know that because I, nobody got past those six rounds. But if it happens, y'all gonna see me how I get stronger, faster, smarter as the rounds go on. And, and I break those guys down. They already be broken down by the time the sixth round. So, and I'm picking it up. So it's just, it's just different. Do you do you feel like you know Delorme was talking about experience? Some of these other guys probably would. I mean, do you feel like that's like you, you're down to your last straw because you're not saying you're faster, you're not saying you're more skilled, you're not saying you're, more, you're saying I fought more than he did. I mean, what else he gonna say? Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's he a good fighter, great fighter for a lot of good guys, but what else he gonna say? He, he, I, everything I do is well rounded. I mean, he not well rounded in everything, so it's just of course he gonna say experience, but he can't even say that because I've been I'm 24 years old. I've really been boxing 20 for, for 24 years, basically. You might, you might as well say I've been boxing all my life. I've been been doing this. But not even just him, just when other guys talk experience, do you take that as like, you got nothing else to pull from? You, you're not saying you're more skilled, you're not saying you... you that's, that, that's what they banking on, it's uh -huh. uh, experience and it's trying to, I guess, trying to survive or doing dirty stuff, but that's not going to work. I'm way smarter now, way on point. Uh, I can't, I can't wait. Y'all gonna see something yeah. special. It looks like it's gonna be very exciting to see you that night. And with the information that we received, what's your ultimate goals right now? 
uh, in boxing period. Yes. Uh, my ultimate goal is in boxing period is to be, you know, uh, I want to be the first person to uh, be a four-time, three or four-time weight division, uh, undisputed weight division champion. Mm. So I want to do that's the goal for, uh, for me. Go down, go down history as uh, you know all-time great. Yeah. Yeah. If I try to get all the best fights I can get, uh, I just I'm gonna fight the best guys and bring the old school era back. Boots, obviously, you know you know what you bring to the table. Your team knows what you bring to the table, and you believe in that, right? As you should. You're the one putting in the work. That being said, out of the the champions, uh, the welterweights out there, who do you feel brings the best out of you? Like out of the Bud, out of Arrow, out of Sean, Danny, whoever it may be, Ugas, who do you feel brings the best? Uh, Boots and us out. I'm not sure. You can't. You can't say say right now. You just gotta let the fight happen. You see on fight night. Man. For me, I feel like I'm, I'm the best. And I, and I, I feel like none of those guys, you know, on, on my level. I'm just different. I feel like I'm a whole different animal compared to those guys. And I, when you're young and hungry, and you want something, and you love love doing what you're doing. I love boxing. It's not about the money for me. It's hard to be somebody like that. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to take over. I was just going to ask, I mean, being so young, 24 years old, how, and knowing how good you are, but not being as young. Many believe will be the next welterweight champion, Mr. Jerron Boots Ennis. Uh, Jerron, we talked about your talent up there. Um, you know, just to expand on that. You know, what do you skills wise? You said you had the most talent, but do you feel you have the most skills too, not just talent? The most skills, talent, uh, hard work, dedication, everything. I, I got it all. I train hard. Uh, I do what I'm supposed to, supposed to do. Right after this fight, I'm going to be right back in the gym on Monday. You know, training and sparring and helping helping other guys get get ready for the fights. I'm, I'm I'm dedicated. I'm ready to take over this division. Sometimes the guys with all the talent, the, then the next question is, do they have that dog in them? And sometimes it's no, but you're from Philadelphia. Do you feel you'll check that box for this time? Uh, most definitely. I'm from Philly. Everybody know I got that dog in me. They ain't, that that been in me. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, it's one of the bigger and better things. I'm ready to, ready to rock and roll. ready to go. Did you see DeLorme's last fight with Stan Jonas? Uh, I was in the back warming up. Uh, I was seeing a little bit. He did good, but I'm not Stan Jonas. I'm a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. Talent-wise, skill-wise, power punching-wise, it's hold everything on a whole different level. And you watch if you watch me fight, it's just because you watch me, don't mean you won't be able to do anything. It's different when you're in there with me. When that heat, when they get hot in that kitchen, they get crazy. You know, he he went even though he's lost his last couple of fights, he dropped Jesse Vargas in that draw. Um, he went the distance, Daniel won some good rounds. He even gave Bud Crawford uh, a couple competitive rounds. Are you looking to? beat him in a way even those guys like Crawford even more convincing I mean I'm not worried about what those guys did or anything I'm going to have fun and do me and, uh, and put on a beautiful performance for you guys and, and come home victorious and, and with that knockout so that's the goal for me just stay calm stay relaxed listen to the team have fun put on a beautiful show make easy work do you feel you're more of a natural, you know, pure switch hitter than Crawford is? Really are a hundred percent both ways? Or is he I'm comfortable both ways. I if I wanted to I could fight on Saturday all right handed or all southpaw. I'm just that, that, that comfortable. Like uh, it's everything all natural for me though. You J Jerome, we we always hear uh fighters say, you know, especially uh looking for that title shot, we'll hear them say, you know, I just gotta keep doing what I'm doing and the title opportunity will come. But it seems like, you know, the Everybody in the boxing world sees what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. They see the talent, they see the skill, they see the power. What do you feel like really has to happen for you to get that title opportunity? Because you know, uh, most people feel that you're yeah. already up there. Yeah. I mean, well, I feel like, uh, I mean, I'm bringing every belt now, so hey, there's no way they really can get around it, but I feel like I'm had to be mandatory because these guys are not going to just know, let me, let me pick Jerron, or let me, let me pick him, let me pick him. They're going to go around, they're going to go around me as long as they can. So I gotta. I'm gonna say I have to be mandatory, and we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna. I'll be mandatory after this fight for, for one of these belts. All right, congratulations to. Uh, I know this is a place somewhere you are now uh, meant to be. Uh, you've been fighting since you were 12 years old. Your opponent said he's bringing experience, but based upon what you're bringing and what you brought and what you have been uh, contributing uh, to uh, the boxing world, uh, right now you should be able to. Uh, be an example for others and speak on that. But 
have the kids have a good role model to look up to. And uh, you see, I'm not crazy. I don't talk crazy, reckless, and all that stuff. And just and for the kids, just be like keep them disciplined and, and you know stay focused and locked in. And I'm always helping. I'm always willing to help you know little kids and or teenagers anything. So I, outside the community of boxing, I do help and I give back. I give clothes and stuff like that and uh, sneakers to the homeless and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things I do that 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 don't get broadcasted behind the closed doors. So being being from Philly, you know, coming from that fighting background, you know, we always see a lot of great fighters come from Philly. Is there is there a fighter that growing up that you maybe uh would look look at, you know, learn from, uh maybe try to imitate a little bit or is there somebody uh, you looked up to, I guess I you mean, could say? Well my style really is is, is my dad and both my brothers put together in one because uh, my brother with uh, Derek Pudge was fast. My uh, other brother Farah uh was powerful, my dad was fast, so it's just, I, it's everything in one, and they, my, they both my brothers are slick, so I got everything, power, speed, slickness, everything, so uh, it's from them, but the fighters that I did watch uh, coming up was Floyd, uh, Cornell, Roy Jones, and a little bit of James Tony, and I started watching Andre Ward too. What have you made of, of the buzz you're receiving, you know, like, Jamal's the main event, but... You know, we all swarmed you to start right after the press conference. I feel like a lot of people are really tuning in. All respect to Jamal James, who's good, but tuning in to see you. What have yeah, you made about? No, I definitely know respect to him, but you know everybody that's coming out here, they, they come to see you know me because uh, I'm fan friendly. But, uh, I bring you know the skills and uh, attributes behind everything, so I got the whole Philly coming with me. So it's gonna be heavy. it's gonna be heavy. You know what I'm do you feel any relief that the business side of boxing is lining up for you now? Because we've seen good fighters like Andrade and, you know, guys that are American with a lot of talent just not get an opportunity. So even Terrence, you know, finally getting the Sean fight. You know, do you... I feel, I feel great. You know, I feel mm-hmm. like everything rolling in the right way. Mm-hmm. I just got to continue to keep being materials. That's all. How, how do you see that fight going, Crawford and Porter? Uh, that's a good fight. Uh, I, th- I think it's 50-50. If Sean Porter do what he's supposed to do, and that's coming forward and... But he got to do it smart. If you do it smart, it's going to be a great fight. I mean, the best man win. Because coming forward, one thing, but Terrence with his counter punches, so you feel like he's got to take an angle with it? What do you mean, Jerome? He can't just go straight in and be like a trash dummy. He got to be smart, use angles, dart in and out, side to side. It can't be a stationary target. That's the only way he's going to be able to do it. That's the way he's going to be able to win or have a great shot. He can't try to box. I think... I don't think he should box. I think he should go straight forward and, and do damage. Why would you beat those guys, given that, you know, they've been 12 rounds and so many title fights, you haven't been able to beat past six? Why? I mean, everybody keeps saying I haven't been past six <laughs> rounds, but don't know where everybody, my team know and everybody else know, once after the sixth round, I'm just getting warmed up. And I get stronger and stronger as the round go on. And don't nobody know that because I, nobody got past those six rounds. But if it happens, y'all gonna see me how I get stronger, faster, smarter as the rounds go on. And, and I break those guys down. They already be broken down by the time the sixth round. So, and I'm picking it up. So it's just, it's just different. Do you do you feel like you know Delorme was talking about experience? Some of these other guys probably would. I mean, do you feel like that's like you you're down 